Lily Kay's Gender Critical Manifesto. I need to start this section by defining terrorism, uh, because as you might notice, anti-trans terrorist is in the title, and I am not hedging that in any way. Uh, this definition of terrorism is a legal definition of terrorism, uh, taken from Merriam-Webster. Quote, the unlawful use or threat of violence, especially against the state or the public, as a politically motivated means of attack or coercion, end quote. Uh, then we have the United Nations definition of terrorism given to us in 2005, which is, quote, which is any act, quote, intended to cause death or serious bodily harm to civilians or non-combatants with the purpose of intimidating a population or compelling a government or an international organization to do or abstain from doing any act, end quote. Um, you know, there's the intimidation there and the demand for going on. Uh, like, yes, we can have a discussion about the definitions, but I'm reading those out. Let's read some quotes from the manifesto, and I'll let you make up your own minds there. Uh, this is the first quote. Uh, quote, speak truth to power. Trans women are men. They know they are men. If these men can't slit the throats of these vile personas in public, admit what they have done, take off the dress, look with abject shame upon the affront to God and nature they have wrought in the service of their masturbatory fantasies, apologize for the children they have hurt with their lies and their drugs and their grooming, apologize for the incarcerated women they have fed to rapist monsters, apologize for the lesbian spaces they have desecrated, and devote the rest of their lives to repairing the damage they have done, if you left it up to me, I'd execute every last one of them personally. End quote. Then we have the next bit, and I would like to give a particular like, content warning on this. Again, if you felt the last quote was bad and like you're kind of a bit shaken right now, again, you can drop out of this and come back at any time. Don't worry, it's, it's not litting us down or anything like that. Um, but yes, the next one is going to be particularly bad, particularly rough, uh, and it is, quote, Lynch Caitlin, Lynch the Sisters Wachowski, Lynch Laurel Hubbard, Lynch Fallon Fox, end quote. Of course, there's so much going on here with not just the transphobia and the lynching, but also the racism in particular relating to Fallon Fox, who, by the way, is a black trans woman. Um... Like this this just really shows just what extent the gender critical movement is willing to go to in order to uphold the supremacy that they hold. Um, I actually went and I talked to Fallon Fox about this and she gave me a statement I'd just like to read out, which, funnily enough, fucking trucks, uh, which, funnily enough, kind of coincided with thoughts I was having already. Like, a lot of what I, we did in the first three sections was actually in the script I had already written, and we just kind of cannibalized that. Um, and what she told me was, quote, I'd like to say that what Lily Cade wrote is an example of what the majority of Turs think about us. She's just saying the quiet part out loud, end quote. So I'd like to thank Fallon Fox for that. And again, we, we clearly agree. That's why we had the whole section where it was like, this is not just like Lily Cade here. Um, Lily Cade is not an anomaly. She is the face of the gender critical movement. She is, th this whole manifesto is an amalgamation of everything they have been working towards the past several years. Actually, um, can I just um, talk about my, my experience from uh, reading through the manifesto? At first, I was just really confused because it wasn't exactly incoherent, but like it was, it's a lot of rambling and a lot of anger and a lot of just asserting that trans women are bad with like nothing to back it up. Mm -hmm. And I just did not know what to do with any of it. Uh, and then I, I kind of, I was reading through again and again, kind of just slowly processing in the back of my mind. And then I just, something in my head clicked and I just changed the phrasing into more familiar words. And I realized, this is just all the tropes. This mm. is just all the tropes, but in more colorful language. Like I, like I was, if I had an actual bingo, I, I wanted to make a bingo card just to check off mm -hmm. all of the tropes. It's it's exactly the same. If, if you want it's just it. more violent and more explicit. 
this is the opera to the singles that people have, like the singles that gender criticals have been putting out over the years. This is just bringing it all together under one roof and putting it as one display, you know. Uh, that's all this is. Uh, I have another quote here that I'd want to read out in, this, in relation to this section, and then we'll go back to our definitions of terrorism. Quote, pedos get the wall. Comos get the wall? Where the fuck are the marines? Where the fuck is the army? Where the fuck are the farmers with pitchforks? Where are the cowboys? Where are the Indians? Where the fuck are the men? Where the fuck are the mothers? How can you stand for this? If my grandfather and all his brothers who stood up to Hitler were still here, they would rip the still beating hearts from every last one of these pedophile monsters in public the same way they have raped your kids. End quote. Yeah, this is, this is using the threat of violence, okay? It, 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 it's just, she's fucking calling this, and that's why I'm not hedging this. Some people I've seen have been calling this stochiastic terrorism. This is not stochiastic terrorism. Uh, something you need to understand about stochiastic terrorism is you never do the actual call to action. Um, the most you might be able to say under stochiastic terrorism is uh, someone needs to do something, that very generic, someone needs to do something, or someone could take it this way and do this. I'm not saying they should, but they could do it. That's the closest stochiastic terrorism like comes to actually call to action. This is just a fucking call to action. That's why it's not borderline terrorism. It's not stochiastic terrorism. It's just straight up terrorism. Okay? It is targeting the trans community. It's calling for direct violence against the trans community. There is no grey here. Okay? Um, and uh, there was something I was going to say on the note the fact that like the whole fucking Nazi shit is also especially disgusting uh, considering the fact that who were the people the Nazis fucking targeted like one of the first fucking groups oh it was uh, I'm going to say it wrong aren't I and then uh, is it Higgins that comes after me uh, <laughs> Hirschfield School uh, for Sexual Wissenschaft um, like they were leading the science on trans people. Um, like the terminology is old and all that, but yes, but when you actually look at what they were doing, they weren't dealing with cross dressers, they were dealing with early forms of uh, medical transitioning and everything like that. They were the place targeted by the Nazis where the vast majority of the books for the book burnings came from. You know, their reports, their documents, trans history completely erased in a night. Okay? Um, so yeah, uh, like, that's especially disgusting here, considering that she is the one, she is, like, Lydia Cade is the one going on about the degeneracy in society and everything, um, which I think, yeah, of course, um, is there anything else you'd like to add to this section before I go on to, like, the charges of paedophilia and specifically talk about that? Uh, I don't think so. Okay. Um, and of course... Something that especially comes in with uh, a lot of trans misogyny are the constant charges of paedophilia. You've already heard several examples in there. I'm not going to reread those quotes, but there are a few more here. Um, quote, this is a paedophile cult. This is the real paedophile cult that has been staring you in the face the whole time laughing. M uh, sorry. The whole time laughing. Masturbating. The, em uh, the naked emperor stroking his cock while you try to find some new nice words to explain gently to him in Newspeak that you would like him to stop and that he is naked. Newspeak doesn't have those words, end quote. Um, okay, if we currently create a Newspeak that doesn't have those words and yet you're using those words, that isn't Newspeak. Uh, this goes back to what I talked about a few videos back. Um... I think it was Brittany Selner, I believe, was the Nazi I responded to recently. And she was also making, like, the whole connection to, like, the trans people and Nazis and, like, they're controlling our language and everything like that. It's just like, you actually understand the stuff. No, we're not. Uh, we're actually creating more words. We're not taking any words That's away. The annoying no thing. words have been banned. Um, yeah, if you say certain words in certain contexts, people are going to judge you. That is not newspeak. That's just called society. Um, you know, you have the right to say something, and I have the right to judge you for it. Um, that's just called words mean things. Yeah. 
But what uh, really annoys me is like in her manifesto, she says to stop saying certain words, like stop saying the new speak words. It's like the point of new speak is that there are fewer the words. words. Yeah. It's fewer words so that you can't communicate certain concepts mm-hmm. like trans people existing. Yeah. Um, that's the thing. Like it's, it's, it's this projection on their part because they have to frame themselves as the small fighting the outsider. Um, it's a theme not just shared by fascism, but Christian theology. You've seen the couple of mentions of like God's order and everything like that. That is also coming through here. Um, there's the whole notion of Christian persecution. Like we are the majority of people in America. We have every institution under our wing. We have like all the holidays are based around our calendar and all this crap. But somehow, because someone said happy holiday, it's just over. We this is not like. This Christian nation has fallen, we've been taken over, we are being, you know, uh, subjugated. And it's just, it's this ridiculous fucking projection. Um, uh, Then we have, quote, Joe Biden, uh, sorry, quote, Joe Biden put a paedophile monster in charge of health and human services so that the process of trapping your children with that lifetime commitment to pharmaceuticals can be honed even further into the path of least resistance. End quote. Um, quote, I thought pedos got the wall. I thought co- uh, comos got the, uh, got the rope. End quote. Um, quote, your fear of the truth has shoveled thousands of children down the hole in Buffalo Bill's basement so he can harvest them for their skins, end quote. That particular one there shows that, like, the whole notion that, like, Buffalo Bill isn't harmful to the trans community, and this sort of shit is just, like, baseless. Because, again, trans folks, that's how they see trans women, Buffalo Bill, you know? Um, so, again, th- this sort of crying about pedophilia is constant throughout the manifesto, as one would come to expect at this point. Um, and I the- don't think there's a single time in the manifesto where she refers to trans women without also calling them pedophiles. Mm-hmm. It's- yeah. Uh, <sighs> and it is, of course, one of those things that, like, the moment you label a LGBT plus person a pedophile, um, <laughs> like, the deck's stacked against them uh, because of how society still views us, you know? Um, we had the whole teacher scares, and like you have the old '60s uh, black and white like PSAs at the cinema. We will now talk about the homosexual predator who like stalks the you know suburban area after your children. Um, you know that's part of the history that has institutional um, weight for so fucking long. It is it's just it's just ridiculous. Um, but yeah. Oh, is there anything else you'd like to say about the pedophilia stuff? Because um, it adds to the whole trans misogynistic reservoir. It's just generally, generally what I call it is this whole notion that trans women are dangerous and trans femme folk mm. are dangerous. Anyone assigned male at birth is dangerous in a way that is never applied to cis men. Uh, I, I must mm. make that clear as well. Um, because like y- y- you listen to like gender critical people i've got a daughter and like i i don't trust a, a trans woman around them because you know the trans woman genes make every single one of them a child raping like thing yeah. and then in the same breath they'll say trans women aren't real women they're men because of their genes it's like hang on a second what happens if we connect those two uh, mm. but they don't they don't care about that because it, it's not rational it's not reasonable it's fascism Fascism doesn't something. have a desire to be reasonable or rational. Um, That's actually something I really hated, like, all the way back reading the BBC article, was there was this whole thing of, like, oh, if even one woman is, is too many. And it's like, where is this energy when it comes to cis men, powerful cis men, who abuse, like, multiple cis women, who abuse multiple children, who we, we know they do this. We know it's a systemic issue. We have so much data on this. We, it's not just one fucking 80-person survey of, of transphobes. Like, we have actual proper data and actual proper theories about We're this. We're discussing the manifesto um, of a series I, 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 right now. <laughs> yeah. I, but it's just, like, oh. the, the, the thing of... There's, there's that hatred of trans women, but that, that energy is, is never applied to cis men, 
even though like just men actually do this not not all of them but you know it's like it's a, it's a very pervasive problem it's and almost I, like they have the institutional power trans women yeah. don't have you know it, it's almost like they can sexually assault people and become presidents i mean just look at the last two presidents you know yeah trump and the current one um you know it, it, it really is just yeah it is like trans women don't have that fucking power um, actually i guess uh, one thing about the manifesto is I noticed that, that it was very strange and something I really had a hard time trying to figure out where she was going was half the time cis men, she seemed to be talking about like they were really misogynistic, mm-hmm. but then the other half of the time she was talking about them, like they're really good. I was like, oh, they all, they all, they all agree with us. I've talked because to reasons, sailors and, that makes them and good. marines and, you know, I, they, they, none of them like, you know, accept that a trans woman is a woman. It's like, yeah. Porn searchers will tell you otherwise. Um, <laughs> but uh, yeah. Uh, it's just, yeah, it's just, she just could not decide. It, it is very much the same thing we've been seeing from gender criticals this whole time. Mm-hmm where it's like there's there's a problem with women being oppressed by men but all of the cis men who hate trans people they're all wonderful mm-hmm. yeah. even the ones who have we know have committed violence against women oh shit that's something that i totally forgot about i meant to put a note in it about um the one trans person that uh she celebrates is of course none other than fucking buck angel who for those who don't know is a known domestic abuser. Um, you know, so it's fucking amazing. Like, the one trans person she fucking celebrates is Buck Angel, who, of course, uh, outed Lana Wachowski and continued to try and target his ex wife for the next uh, 11 years. Yes, from 2003 to 2014, I believe. Uh, you know, and it's, it's, it's just amazing that, again, like, of course, she constantly misgenders Buck Angel and like talks about the whole self hatred thing, and that's why she loves Buck Angel because of this whole self hatred thing. But it, it just, yeah, I'm sorry, I, I I just remembered that point. I just wanted to get that out there. Uh, I didn't mean to derail you. Yeah, uh, I'm sorry. Oh no, that's completely fine. Um, I, I was done anyway. Oh, okay. Uh, the the only other thing I guess I can think to add is um, other than than the the quotes you suggested I take down is um i noticed uh a very like fascist uh uh like anti not exclusively anti-semitic but but very common in anti-semitism trope um i'm not sure if it makes sense to 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 mention it now or if i should have slotted it before i'm very lost but basically um like the the she kept complaining about how trans women are, are these weak like shameful men mm-hmm. um and like this this very much this hating of them for not living up to masculine ideals but then at the same time the whole point is that they're this dangerous threat that's that going to come up next destroy in the anti-semitism actually um okay so we're the thinking posture. on the... <laughs> the, the, it's, it's just the posturing in regards to like white supremacy um because mm. gender criticals in like I, it's it's let's be clear it's not a case of gender criticals have like merged with fascists over the time. Uh, as we see, the people who are like siding with gender critical have always had anti-Semitic views. <clears throat> J.K. Rowling. Mm. Uh, so you know, it's 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 a case of their views align and come together. Um, I've got a bunch of quotes here. Uh, there will be some that deal with the um, the power difference, which we'll come to in a second. Uh, but the first one here is quote. Uh, when Mitch Fest fell, so fell Western civilization, end quote. Um, quote, take the culture back or the dogs will be, the, will be all that survives of Western civilization, end quote. Now, here's the big one, and again, anti-Semitism. Quote, this is your great replacement, bitch. These people castrate your kids. They sold them to Big Pharma to be castrated while you cheer them on for living their truth, end quote. Um, I'll, let's skip over one, because there's one at the end I want to talk about here as well. Uh, quote, the evil trannies are 1% of the population. They control the matrix. They do not control real life, end quote. Actually, there is actually a point to that one as well, sorry. Quote, these people understand attention. 
attention is the currency of your horrifying society. Teenage girls want attention more than anything else on earth. They have been offered a choice between mincing TikTok whore and navel gazing, spoiled, rotten, weak, pathetic, fake man victims because you sold them out for, for the smartphone. Trans women and the shadow lords of the algorithm control this attention. End quote. Um, so there we see the whole they control the metrics. Uh, trans women and the shadow lords of the algorithm. The Great Replacement, uh, The Cries of the Fall of Western Civilization. These are all anti-Semitic dog whistles, um, which of course relies on the whole Nazi ideology that whilst the Jew is weaker than the Aryan, the Jews still have amassed this cultural control where they puff at everything. That's why the Nazis believe they'd lost the First World War because the Jews had weakened their people um, and that they would do the same in the Second World War unless immediate action was taken. Um, and I know that's a simplification. It does go much but, uh, back much further. Um, we, of course, had uh, Martin Luther, not the American King Jr., uh, Martin Luther, the Protestant Reformationist. His uh, work on uh, demonizing the Jews was the template for Kristallnacht, um, you know, but again, Nazi ideology is rooted in this belief that they are both simultaneously the perfect people, society, strength, endurance, you know, perfect masculinity and femininity and all this. But at the same time, they are in a weakened state. They have been brought to their knees by some shadowy organization, a cabal working in the background. Uh, and that is, of course, the Jewish state in their eyes. Um, you know, this is what uh, David Icke refers to as, like, the reptilians. Um, you know, the whole notion that there's a secret society controlling everything. Uh, it's wrapped up in the whole, like, Illuminati conspiracies. Uh, there's just lots of ways that it has been repackaged. Um, you know, uh, I see Higgins has uh, heard me fuck up my <laughs> pronunciation. Uh, 2d4 psychic damage 2D4 psychic damage um, but like it is always rooted in this paradoxical state of we are the strongest but also the weakest um, and again that has been recycled because it is one and the same here um, they've just dragged trans people into it when they say, say big pharma the reason I kept bringing up big pharma is because there's a belief that Jewish people control all of the drugs in the world all of the pharmacies uh, you know and it's, it's them. They're the ones pushing to uh, trans our daughters, our daughters, uh, to weaken the, you know, Western civilization and bring it to its knees again. Uh, that's the belief there. That's what uh, Cade means by the shadow laws. That's just, that's just, she just means Jew. That's what she means there. Um, but yes, if you want to talk more about, like, the whole power dynamic and everything, I don't know as much you want to add there. <coughs> Apparently, I just want to um, just correct Higgins on something minor. I think you'll find uh, that she's actually half Dutch and half British, not German. Yeah, I'm not German. <laughs> uh, I'm a terrible person. I'm safe. Um, um, but I, yeah, uh, I am not... <laughs> uh, I just got a DM of like, holy fuck, I control the pharmacy. Yeah. Uh, there are so many jokes I could make because this friend of mine is on a lot of pills. Um, so, um, y yeah, you, you wanted me to add something about a thing. Uh, if you want to, uh, I, I don't know if I covered like this weird power thing that they have going on. Um, you know, the whole, I, we're, we're simultaneously stronger than you, but weaker than you. Um, I mean, that's really all that is to it is the enemy is simultaneously too weak to to be worthy to rule but also strong enough to to destroy everything and it yeah. makes no sense at all but it, it's just that thing of needing uh like a a a strong enemy to feel threatened by but also uh a weak enemy to to feel superior they have to. to present themselves as david um in the david and goliath dynamic uh, yeah you know they have to present themselves as the underdog Otherwise, someone will just realize they're just fucking fascist. Um, oh, I see. Uh, we have been joined by a friend, <laughs> um, the graceful gamer. Hello. Um, 
So yes, uh, I'm trying to think. Is there anything else I want to add here? But again, as we've seen, like gender critical movement is just at this, it's just saturated with white nationalists like Stephen Yixi Lennon. They've also like promoted like outright Holocaust deniers. Um, but interestingly, they also exploit the Nazi imagery stuff as well. Uh, I, I dealt with that in relation to um, Graham Linehan recently, and like how he get he went on to talk about like you know trans youth receiving fully reversible puberty blockers with absolutely no side effects is the equivalent of you know Nazis experimenting on children in concentration camps, and it's just absolutely fucking horrific. Um, again. It's all related, related to this, like, lost lesbian, lost daughters shtick they've got going. Uh, but yes. Um, oh, there's also just a unhealthy focus on the Wachowski sisters and, like, The Matrix as well. And it's just, it's really strange how, like, The Matrix is, like, discussed throughout the article. But again, I, I should note, of course, in the same way that I note that Helen Fox is black, the Wachowski sisters are Jewish as well. Um, so, like they've kind of become, especially as Holly, Hollywood elite, which is another euphemism, uh, which just means Jew in a lot of places. Uh, again, that, that's just a way for them to sort of like, see how scary all this is. Um, you know, that there's a masked boogeyman coming for you sort of thing. Uh, but yeah, um, I'm just trying to think now. Ugh, there's something else. Like, by the way, I just want to be clear also, um, like, I know I talk about the Wachowski sisters and everything, I don't want to present them as heroes, because there are criticisms to be had of the Wachowski sisters, like, of course, you can criticise their work and all of that, but there's also a discussion, like, black people are having about, like, cultural appropriation in regards to one of the Wachowski sisters, I forget in which one it is that has the, um, the matted hair, um, that's supposed to be dreadlocks, uh, like, there, there's, there's genuine criticisms to be had there, um, they're part of a secret Jewish state, not part of the actual criticism. That's just Nazi uh, foghorn, okay? Um, but yeah. Uh, okay, uh, and that is... that. Oh no, we got the uh, attacks on trans men throughout the article. Uh, I believe you've actually got 12 quotes, so you've got more quotes than I do, so if you want to take this section, uh, the mic is yours. Uh, yeah, uh, sorry, one sec. I really should just, just like go on do not disturb mode on a uh, Discord uh, during streams, but then like people actually contact me through Discord instead of chat. So, uh, but yes, um, I I went through and I found uh, all of the anti-trans mask uh, dog whistles. Oh, well, okay, if I I could have ha made an argument for including every single mention of children, because mm -hmm. as we discussed before, usually the the moral panic over the welfare of the children is specifically about the quote-unquote girls. They sometimes mention boys as like an afterthought. There's even like a sentence, a very specific sentence in there that I notice where it's like she meant, like Lily Cade mentions the girls and like, and later on it mentions, she mentions the boys. Like, they, they are. Sorry. Yeah. Um, yeah, but I decided to, to be a bit more conservative and managed to chop it down to 12 quotes in the, the manifesto. So I guess, uh, I'll just start reading those. Um, quote, I would send my daughter to learn what a golden shower is from Max Hardcore before I sent these satanic tranny freaks, uh, before I let these satanic tranny freaks educate her about body, her body and her soul. End quote. I'm sorry, that was terrible. Uh, quote, your children are mutilating their bodies to please them. These people understand attention. Attention is the currency of your horrifying society. Teenage girls want attention more than anything else on earth. End quote. Quote, they have infiltrated every level of your society with one goal, degrade women. Piss on the faces of your mothers, your daughters, the women who fought to get you here. Piss on your right to say no. Cut your breasts off, sew your pussies shut. Take the word mother, how the fuck dare you let the actually faggots take the word mother from you. Uh, attacks on quite a lot of uh, different things that the trans masks, AFAB and binary folks, etc., etc. do. Quotes, I know what a woman is, bitch, and I know what a man is, and I know what a mother is, and I know what a child is, end quote. Quotes, these tranny 
freaks are experimenting on your children and cutting them apart in full view of the public and you stand by and let it happen because you are worried they will call you out for being afraid of them, end quote. Quote, uh... Sorry. There's nothing to worry about. I, I know it's a lot. Um... Yeah, no, uh, that one I was just trying to, like, I was like, oh, it only mentions children, and I realized, right, the whole cutting them apart in full view. Mm -hmm. Like, technically, you could say it's about all trans kids, but, like, I, I think yeah. this is, like, this is the ghost boobs. Uh, quote, every fucking teenage girl experiences dysphoria, end quote. Mm -hmm. Quote, you have allowed the worst people in your society to educate your daughters about, uh, I don't know what I did with that one, but, you know, um, daughters being educated, that's a dog whistle. Quote, your children who agree to be mutilated for the attention of the cult are weak, end quote. Uh, and of course, this, this does just say children, but because it's about attention, she established earlier in the manifesto that trans, trans men just transition for attention. Uh, Non-binary folk who were AFAB just do it for attention. Quote, you trust your children to the smartphone and this is what it did to you, end quote. Again, going back on pre-established thing of like, they do it for attention, the internet trans them. Quote, 12 year old- uh, Rapid onset gender dysphoria. That's the, yeah. What's the best term? Yeah, it's like- Quote, 12 year old girls experiencing the normal rhythms of the experience of being 12 year old girls are encouraged to mutilate their growing bodies to please these pedophiles because it gets attention, end quote. And, uh, quote, to break me and others like me, they raped and groomed and tortured and sliced up and desecrated and educated your daughters, mm. end quote. And finally, quote, I'm here to take the language back from the forked tongue of Newspeak and save your daughters, end quote. So, so basically, any time they mention uh, daughters, Anytime they mention girls, anytime they mention mothers, taking the word mother away, uh, like th these are all dog whistles um, against trans men, trans masks, non binary folk who were, who were AFAP. Yeah. It's like it's all through the manifesto. Mm -hmm. uh, but like, the... sadly, uh, like, by the way, I, I have a section in my original script where I talked about like the attacks on uh, trans men, the sexualization of trans boys, and like this whole phantom breasting. That, that's why I had everything to go and I just took from that script in the uh, third section that we did. Uh, I was going to talk about this then, but then I, I was online, uh, of course, last night and some of you might have seen this. Um, and like, just completely unprovoked. Like, in general, people have just been talking about, hey, there is, like, a lot of fucking terrible shit. There is, like, just fucking anti, you know, trans woman terrorism. There's trans misogynistic terrorism in this. Um, but then other people have been talking about the fact that this is, like, trying to, like, argue to strip trans men and trans boys of their medical and sexual autonomy to preserve them as a sexual resource and all this. Um... So, like, people are doing that uh, in general, but sadly, there have been certain individuals who have been like, this is only about trans women. Uh, and I ended up getting in a bit of a, uh, a bit of a clash over that. Um, because it's like, it's just kind of fucking annoying how, how like, you're missing half the conversation. Uh, and I, I should really read out the, the thing that I, I, I put it so nicely um, <laughs> in one of my posts that I really should just find that. Uh, it was uh, the one that I mentioned, my friend. Uh, if I can find that, yeah. Uh, quote, a friend once explained to me that, as a community, we're very good at recognizing that when trans so say dangerous men, they mean trans women existing. But our shit at realizing vulnerable girls is code for trans men with autonomy using it in a way I don't like. Um, by the way, when I say that we're very good at recognizing internally as a community, I don't necessarily mean we're very good at acting on it. Acting and recognizing are two very different things. But when someone reads a transphobic manifesto about how trans women are dangerous, like, and they see dangerous men, generally they do understand what that means. Um, mm. I, I, I don't really have difficulty explaining that to people. But when they see vulnerable girls, they respond as if, 
we are talking about vulnerable girls when we're not talking about vulnerable girls. There's never been shown to be some epidemic of vulnerable girls out there. It is trans boys, trans men. That's what the whole Tavistock versus Bell was about. You know, trans boys who are actually teenage girls that have been convinced by rapid onset gender dysphoria that they must mutilate themselves and stuff like that. That's what it was about. Um, it's it's, just... Yeah, that's the thing is like, as a community, like there, there are people in the community who don't respect trans misogyny. Mm -hmm. like, there, are, there are problems with that. There are problems with people not taking it seriously. And I'll admit that I've noticed uh, lately with some of the things Athlon I've been working on, like, I, not that I don't care about trans misogyny or anything, but just I don't always understand. Or realize how just, bad it is. Or realize so. how bad it is. Sometimes I just don't take the time to think because um, like, I'm just really exhausted all the time with being expected to put so much energy into so many things. I, I just I I kind of get numb to things. And it's not until I see Ethel really freaking out that I realize, oh, I have to, I have to really, yeah. Right. So like, I'm, I, I am also included in that group of not always taking trans with such things seriously. Mm -hmm. But when it comes to just understanding the concepts and uh, just, just being able to have that conversation, it's really, really easy. Whenever a turf talks about like predatory men, it's so easy for people. It's like we have a browser extension that just replaces predatory men with trans women. Like people get it immediately. Mm -hmm. But whenever the turfs are talking about vulnerable girls, people are like, "Oh, the the detransitioners and 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 people who aren't sure and people who are, and it's like no, nah, they're like they are they are exclusively talking about trans. Like statistically, there is one girl who's actually just a vulnerable girl. Mm -hmm. But they, they are." They, it is exactly the same thing where it's 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 all trans men, uh, trans masks, non-binary people who are AFAB that they're talking about. And it's also important to take things in the context of Lily Cage here. And like when I was pointing out the facts that what this article was also doing, as well as lynching and like promoting terrorism against trans women, was calling for trans men and uh, AFAB MB folk to be stripped of their medical and sexual autonomy, is the facts that we saw earlier uh, how Lily reacts to what she sees as people making a move on what she believes is rightfully hers. She will physically assault people over that, you know. Uh, and if you think the assault only happens to, like, outsiders who come in, that's not fucking true. We know she rapes people. So, you know, she is fighting to preserve what she perceives as her sexual stock from outsiders. You know, that sexual violence is going to be directed at tran trans men and MB folk as well. Uh, make no fucking mistake or illusion about that. Um, but yeah, sorry. The thing uh, that really annoys, like the thing that re really made me angry when I saw this was, uh, especially well, so, so when, when Ethel jumped in and was like, hey, maybe don't uh, d trivialize and dismiss violence against trans men for no reason. Uh, a tra trans fans sh showed up to get angry and say, how dare you AFAB person send to yourself and, like, uh, and then I'm get not... angry. <laughs> and they said how, <laughs> how I, I'll, it was like a patronizing apology, you know, oh, I'm so sorry, uh, you know, AFAB person for centering myself on lynchings and stuff. It's like, here's the thing. I never said don't center yourself. I've actually stated the exact opposite. Concentrate on what you need to right now. The thing is, this original post was not about someone centering the struggles of trans women. It was her saying, Psst, this article is only like targeting, uh, you know, trans women. You're like that, that's unnecessary provocation. Just leave the, just leave the trans men and those who want to cover both sides of the issue the fuck alone. You know, mm. uh, people have been pretending like this is the same as say um, a cis man turning up a co at a conversation about violence against women and going, well, what about the men? And that's just not the case. People were having their own conversations, you know. Again, in my script, completely unprompted. You hadn't even read that part of the script before we're doing this stream. Um, you know, I had included this because I wanted to talk about it because it was important to me to note the full extent of the violence, you know. Mm. Um, we are doing this of our own prerogative. Yeah. And then this other person's coming along and going, no, you can't do that. Um, you know, it has to only be about trans women. From, you're, you're taking the mic away from me by using your own microphone to talk about 
all of the issues that impact you. Um, but yeah. um, but what, what really made me angry was that there was that as well. Uh, so, so, so there was that. There was trans femme showing up and then getting angry at Ethel for acknowledging the issue and also not conforming to the expectations of being an evil trans man, trying to make everything about uh, themselves. But then trans men were also showing up and saying, "How dare? as a trans man, I don't think this is a big deal. How dare you? How dare you say this is a big deal? It can only be about trans women. And the reason why this annoys me, the reason why this makes me really angry isn't because I'm like, oh, no, trans, trans men don't get a voice. Like going into this, uh, when I woke up this morning, when I saw how upset Ethel was, I'm like, okay, this is a situation where we can worry about trans men later. We need to support trans femmes. Uh, and I was completely fine with that. And that was the, the, the approach I was going for. Yeah. But the thing is, the violence against trans men in the manifesto and in gender critical ideology is not a separate issue from trans misogyny. The trans misogyny of, of, of TERFs relies on the subjugation of trans men. Yeah. When you undermine the fact that the trans men are subjugated and that trans masks and non-binary folk who are a uh, fab are uh, subjugated you are undermining your own analysis because the, the thing that the whole thing is that trans women are dangerous and predatory and in order to have dangerous predatory people we need to attack you need to have a vulnerable victim class to defend from them and the way that the turfs justify this vulnerable victim class is they they buy into this idea that everyone who is assigned female at birth is vulnerable and cannot be trusted. And like the second, here's the thing is, is they're making up bullshit. They can make up whatever bullshit they want. They don't have to go with this idea that trans men are not real and are just confused lost lesbians. They could make up a thing about how like trans men are these depraved women who want male privilege and the power that comes with it and seek to dominate uh, other women. They could do that, yeah. but what happens if they do that? Mm -hmm. Well, uh, first of all, they have to admit that not all AFABs are vulnerable. Uh, they have to admit that th they can have power. They they can, um, you know, hold their own against um, men. They have to like they lose a lot of the the vulnerability of their constructive victim class. They have to admit that AFABs can hurt each other, mm -hmm. and then they lose this whole idea of. Uh, if we just keep out all the trans women, then then cis women will be safe. Uh, I know they, they make they, they make it harder to um, claim that AFABs are a homogenous group. When feminists call them out on their shit, they have a harder time dismissing them. Mm -hmm. uh, they have a harder time trying to convince cis women that that just if all the cis women stick together, then that will make everything perfect. They have a harder time claiming the silent majority. Yeah. They lose a lot their, their rhetoric loses a lot of its power I, if they do that the whole basis of like we're protecting these people when you're actually encouraging medical and sexual violence against them like mm. we, we're just conceding the point by, by leaving the conversation out we concede the point we give them credibility we give them legitimacy by doing that and no again i need to be clear about this i'm not stating that trans femme people should be out there like campaigning on this right now because you've got your own shit to deal with deal with your own shit that was never the issue i didn't say anything on this issue until someone else came along and started attacking those who were critiquing you know um the aspects that do impact trans men you know and it's just it it's interesting how everyone kept flipping it around and like saying that like, you're coming out here. It's like, no, I'm responding to someone telling trans men and people who are talking about the issues that trans men suffer to effectively shut the hell up, um, you know. And it's it's very it's very strange as well. Like even after you, you said you were trans femme, mm -hmm. they were still treating you like this, you know, selfish yeah. man trying to make everything about men I, i've got the quote and it here just... actually from that thread if you want me to read it out quickly um, yeah, sure. so I, I first of all this is a response to someone else i i content warnings for sexual assault and violation of medical autonomy uh because i don't see why quote what you are referring uh, what sorry quote what you are defining strictly as sexual harassment includes both rape and the cr complete removal of medical autonomy what's more is the op was not trans women have it worse 
but that this is only slash mostly about trans women, end quote. Uh, and then this other person was the one who turned up and went, quote, I'm so sorry for centering myself in the discussion of a letter calling for my murder and the genocide of everyone like me. Truly, this is about you this time. I'm so sorry, you noble AFAP. Please accept my humble apology, end quote. To which my response was, quote, I'm AMAP. So, A, stop lying about me, and B, stop lying about my position. I never said you cannot censor yourself. That's not what the OP did. She decided to go after people, unprovoked, for discussing how Cade is trying to strip trans men of sexual and medical autonomy, end quote. Their response to this, quote, fuck you, end quote. That's literally, yeah. Yep. Uh, but yeah. Uh, I just, like, especially when, like, trans men were showing and be like, oh, I'm, I'm so wonderful to trans women. Look at me, invalidate myself. And like, you are not helping trans, you are making things worse for everyone. Like, we talked about Belle v. Tavistock. Yeah. Okay, when trans men get stripped of their medical autonomy that does not just affect tra- it affects everyone and like th- we we had we had an attempted genocide over this once mm. already yeah of trans children and people are still not taking it seriously like, this, if, if you if you don't if you don't care about trans men f- fine fine i'm not prepared to argue with you on that i'm not prepared to look like a bad person i'm not prepared to have people fucking call me an mra I don't, I don't care if you don't care about trans men, but this affects the entire community. I, like the, 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 these attacks, they are so much more dangerous than calls to violence because they are more palatable. Mm-hmm. You know, they, they, they look very civil and, and, and nice and clean. And there's no, they, they, no one sees the blood. It's all settled in a, in a courtroom. Uh, you know, they're, they're much easier for one or two cis people to like, if you want to harm a whole country of trans people, you got to get a lot of cis people on board for that to do that with physical violence. But for stripping trans people of medical autonomy, all it took for Bellevue Tavistock was two fucking yeah. people going to court. One was a mother of a trans child who wouldn't even see medical care until they were over the age of full medical consent. The other was an adult who transitioned in adulthood. Um, you know, two people who were not even affected by the case brought about an attempted genocide and of all the trans children in an entire country because we are not taking this seriously. And uh, it's another issue that it will cause impacts is um, there was a quote here that actually I've missed. Uh, I've got to find it. Um, it's the one about the gym. Uh, right. OK. Um, this is actually a quote you missed here, actually. Uh, This is just kind of a strange thing that I noticed. Um, Quote, The cure is acceptance and spiritual growth, a fucking gym routine, hobbies, goals, not bullshit personas, lies, a lifetime of commitment to pharmaceuticals, hack job surgeries, the construct of vile funhouse mirror effigy of the opposite sex from the bodies honed by millions of years of evolution that you have allowed the worst people in society to educate your daughters about. End quote. Um all the bullshit they're listening at the start, I, I did find it, like, as tragic as everything is, just the mention of, like, Jim, it really reminds me of that, like, toxic positivity in uh, white women healer circles that you might have seen, that, like, you don't need your bipolar meds, you just need to go for a gym, like, go to the gym. <laughs> there's that. But there's also the fact that the cure... Um... Who's the focus of conversion efforts when it comes to gender? It's not, tra- it's not you know, trans girls. Again, they don't give a shit about trans girls. They do talk more about conversion therapy for adult trans women as, like, fixing the sexual predator. But when it comes to children, conversion therapy efforts, again, ostensibly focus on trans boys. You know? Um, and again, that's just another thing that's like, it's like, it, it takes nothing to expand your knowledge and to acknowledge the complexities here and what is at stake and how the harm is being done. Okay. We are not advocating trans femme people focus on these issues. Again, you've got your own shit. 
but why are you taking time out of the important stuff you're doing to go after people who are, you know, who, who are talking about these issues? Um, it just makes me, like, so it's, it's, fucking it's angry. Like, it's like the person running out of the, uh, the heart attack conference, charging into the cancer conference and screaming, you lot aren't dealing with heart attacks, you know. Um, you know, like, it you makes... should be dealing with that instead. And it's just, yeah. Sorry. It, yeah, it just makes me so fucking angry because, like, they're, we're, we're currently dealing with a tragedy. The trans community is in pain. And the people who are most affected, like, I can't speak for all trans men, but I've been trying to help. And instead, we have to deal with this bullshit where people have decided that invalidating trans men mm. at the expense of understanding what is happening to you yeah. is more important because they would rather the, 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 like we have this idea that caring about what happens to trans men mm -hmm. is is like letting the the patriarchy win or whatever is it's, it's anti-feminist and it's like a real girl boss move to 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 and dismiss and invalidate trans men and it's at the point where people are like not allowed to talk about what is happening and not wanting to understand it and are at each other's fucking throats rather than trying to address the issue. The gender critical movement is relying on a pincer move. It's attacking us on two fronts. We are only covering one of those fronts. And here's the thing. The, like, th this is what they want. Like, part of the reason they fucking do this, part of the reason they go so hard on trans femmes and only trans femmes is, I don't know if they're doing this intentionally, but it certainly has this effect of building up a fuck ton of resentment in the trans community. And now we're at each other's throats. It is a divide and conquer strategy. Yeah. Um, and like, it is possible to get over that. Like, I when I was writing the video, I honestly didn't know, like I, I talked to you about it. And I knew that there were people who had issues with this. But I was like, would my subscribers really need this information? I was like contemplating, should I really include it? Am I just adding paragraphs for like, little reason as I decided you know actually yeah it's important reiterate it make sure people have this information um but then like just the last few days it's just been why um you know and that, here's the thing I I'm not someone who's shying away from calling what Lily K has done terrorism I'm not shying away from that it's terrorism against trans women it is trans misogynistic terrorism uh I'm not putting any hedge on that stochiastic borderline fuck that shit it's just terrorism just call it what it is it's just part of the gender critical manifesto it's what they've been working towards all these years um but at the same time i don't like the idea of turning a blind eye to conversion efforts and people being stripped of medical and sexual autonomy and also by by doing that by turning by turning away you know i I should apologize. I think I said turn a blind eye and I shouldn't have done that. That was ableist of me. I do apologize there. Um, but by doing that, uh, you know, by looking away, you know, that, that's just, that just gives them the narrative. That just helps them. Um, but yeah. Um, is there anything else you really want to talk about? Uh, sorry. I feel like I had something, but it's just, um, which kind of brings me to like the last sort of section of this video, which I'm going to give the content warning again for because um, I might actually cut this section out and I might upload it as a separate thing. Excuse me. So for that, content warning for transphobia, homophobia, lesbophobia, biphobia, racism, anti-Semitism, rape and sexual assault, domestic abuse, desexualization of minors, terrorism and white nationalism. Uh, and now that you said all of that, I did actually think. Okay, then go back. Don't worry. I, I can come back to this later. Do yours first. Sorry. Um, uh, I'm sorry. Um, so, like, I, I kind of like touched on this in the thread I did on Twitter, uh, but like, when it comes to the these situations where people feel like there's too much focus on trans men, mm -hmm. and and like something needs to be done about it, instead of tearing like trans men, trans masks, etc., down. How about positive calls to action? Just say, hey, trans femmes are suffering a lot right now. Like mm. re reach out, support, uh, you know, ch check on the ones you know, et cetera. 
in, instead of trying to say how, how dare you talk about trans like if, if trans men are really talking too much about ourselves you can just you can just ignore it you can talk like more it's on fine your side, like, just yeah. ignore it talk more on your side boost the stuff that you think is important mm-hmm. calls to positive action are a a wonderful thing um but also i also want to say like that there's this stigma against listening to uh trans men uh, and trans masks because there's this idea of oh men there's this very cis-centric idea of men don't know anything mm-hmm. um men don't understand oppression and like no like I said before, I've um, dealt with you know, growing up. I dealt with being treated like property, like reproductive property, since I was a little kid, since I was nine years old. Uh, I've I've dealt with misogyny. I I've dealt with you know thinking about when I was a kid. I wanted to be a scientist, and one of the reasons I wanted to do that was honestly just the challenge of making it as a woman scientist and proving that women could do that. And I think a lot of trans masks identify with that idea of wanting to do things that uh, society says women can't do just to prove that women can. Mm-hmm. And that's actually a very painful thing that a lot of us go through is realizing we can't do that, having to find other ways to be feminist. Like tra- trans men are not cis men, believe it or not. Yeah. We know a lot about um, uh, misogyny and we know a lot about patriarchy. And there are things that we notice that trans terms don't because our experiences are different. There are blind spots. We both have blind spots. There are things about uh, trans misogyny that trans masks are not gonna notice. There are things about um, certain aspects of misogyny that trans terms aren't gonna notice because you don't have those experiences. And I think that, um, you know, some of the trans terms I've spoken to may be able to back me up on this uh, in the conversations we had, there are things that I will, will mention that like, oh, I didn't know that. Uh, so, you know, we, we need to listen to each other. It can't all be one-sided. Uh, please listen to trans men, not not because like, we, we are, need a seat at the table, we need to make everything about us, but because we have insights that are important to the whole community. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and like another thing that I think about is like, some trans men have experience of the gender critical movement you know as mm-hmm. mentioned earlier you know the gender critical movement does actually groom people and um, we have evidence of this and how they groom people as well this isn't some oh there's some evil organization out there this is people are like trading in relationships and sex and stuff and trying to encourage you know um people who at the time think they're lesbians but then later come out as like trans mask um you know it's just like there's so much to gain here and again nobody is telling any trans femme person not to talk about what currently impacts them not to center themselves right now that's not what we're doing and the fact that i have to as a trans femme person keep repeating that <laughs> kind of shows like oh, yeah. how there's the how constant. how it's just like kind of etched this way into me that i feel like i have to constantly qualify everything i have to say Oh, thank I fuck, I am not the only one. I, I, it's like, I, and here's the scary thing. The other times I have to fucking qualify everything I say is when I'm scared, when I'm scared of like being attacked with trans misogyny, you know, being too aggressive, being too violent, being too forward, you know, that's the other time. So as a trans femme person, like feeling I have to qualify everything I say when discussing, you know, um, the issues trans men face and MB folk uh, who are assigned female birth, it's not a nice feeling. It's, it's 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 just an extension of the same fucking anxiety and trauma there. Um, so you know, uh, I just wish it wasn't a fucking issue. Um, yeah. But yeah. Um, so uh, every, every time we talk about something like this, no, 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 please, you don't have to be sorry. But I do want to like add um, just my own experience as well is that feeling of having to qualify everything, that feeling of having to constantly prove that I'm not a trans misogynist because that is kind of like the default assumption for trans men. Um, I don't, I, that kind of sounds like a parallel to like being assumed to um, be a, I guess a predator if you're a trans woman. And like, obviously it's not the same thing, but it it does really hurt uh, being assumed to be a bigot just because of who you are mm-hmm. and, having to constantly try to prove that. And like, it doesn't matter how much I do. It doesn't matter how much work I do here on uh, like streams that are exclusively about uh, trans 
femmes and their issues mm. it doesn't matter how many videos i make of my own supporting like women uh all with all kinds of gender histories that would be the default assumption i've had every single time i've uh criticized a trans woman and uh she's responded mm -hmm. she has used the fact that i am a man to claim that i'm being trans misogynistic like not not he was trans misogynistic he said and did this but mm. just like oh he's a man he's um, a trans we, man we saw that with like how the person didn't know my gender and just assumed that like yeah oh you, you must be afab i was like eh, no yeah um i'm um, like there's also just this constant uh guilt like i i i had really not planned to talk about the this issue this much um because i'm convinced that if i do that is me hurting trans femmes and... it doesn't subtract anything like that there's this there's a sickening notion that like oppression is a pie and like everyone mm. has a piece of the pie it's, that's not how it works it's it's the, it's the same issue we used to have with equality with like oh like there's only so much equality to go around don't like don't take too much equality and it's like oh <laughs> there's only so much oppression to go around don't take too much of the oppression it's like can a person like... take too much? like okay a group can come to dominate a conversation see white women versus like the struggles that black women face uh the complete erasure of black men's struggles you know um but that's not what's fucking happening here like again i have not seen the same fucking bullshit of like the way that cis men turn up at post about violence against women going what about men you know I, I, that's not what we're seeing here people you know talk about See, how thing. things impacted them i talk about how as, as broad as i fucking can because i try to do that you know, mm. um, that's why I'm like going out of the way. The Chowski sisters are Jewish, so like the anti Semitism there is going to hurt them more. Fallon Fox mm. is black, so like the whole call to lynch, etc. There's a racist element there as well. Um, like, I, I try to do that. Um, mm. but... Like, here's the thing is, I, I legitimately thought that there were like trans men showing up and saying, What about trans men? Uh, and I just haven't seen like, it. I, I, there probably are somewhere. Like, I need Statistically, to, that's the thing. I need to qualify here again. Um, like when, again, just like the whole thing, they're probably that. I statistically speaking, there's going to be a trans person out there who uses their trans status to try and pressure someone into having sex. That's going to happen statistically. Uh, the whole gold star lesbian thing is predicated around that. Like you know, um, but yeah. Uh, but like just from the way people talk about this i'm convinced that like i get the impression that there's a whole bunch of trans men out there who are behaving absolutely horribly and and going around to to like to trans women and, and and harassing them and saying why are you talking about trans men more how dare you this has to be all about me like that's the way people talk about it and like the the constant thing of trans men have problems with trans misogyny, trans men don't want to be held accountable. And I don't doubt that that does happen. And I've been told by uh, trans firms, I trust that, that there are issues there. Mm -hmm. But like, there's, I, there's, I have no idea what the scale is like because it's only ever just the claims that it happens. There's no, I never actually see the context. I never actually see the, um, uh, I never actually see examples. And it's, it's gotten to the point where I just don't know what is happening mm -hmm. and i i'm just constantly I, I i don't trust what's going on but i just assume that trans men are always in the wrong uh it's just uh it's it's a whole thing i should probably stop i'm getting myself started